But, but let's start with that one. We've had a lot of conversation this morning about the way the Kings handled the end of the game. First, uh, Jay Will didn't like that they called the timeout at all. When they got the rebound off of a Steph Curry miss, let De'Aaron Fox go right. and try and win. I and then the other was just sort of the shot that they get at the end there. How do you feel about the way the Kings have handled sort of pressure situations in this? Because it brings to mind whether they'll be able to deliver a knockout. I'm very proud well. of the Kings. I mean, listen, they fought, they fought. And I think that, you know, what they didn't lose the, you know, listen, they didn't throw away the game or anything like that. It was right there. It was a one-point game. The, the Golden State Warriors won it, but they didn't lose it. The reality of the situation is that when you look at De'Aaron Fox, he has emerged as a superstar in this game. When we think about him, we now need to look at him in the same ilk as a John Morant, somebody along those lines. By the way, he's outscoring Steph Curry in this series. Mm -hmm. Think about what he's doing and what he's bringing to the table. You got to give a lot of love and respect to what you're seeing from him. The only thing that I would say is that because who you of who you are, you are the reigning clutch player of the year. I understand it's a situation where you're making the right play. You just don't give that ball to Harrison Barnes. You take it yourself. That would have been me simply because of the kind of series that he is having. Harrison Barnes hasn't played bad. I'm certainly not trying to imply that. But at the end of the day, you want that ball in your hands. You want to be the one that launches that shot. And rather than go into the defense where you got two guys collapsing on you, forcing you to kick it out to your left to Harrison Barnes, I would have launched from deep because he's already shown throughout this regular season and throughout this first-round series he can make shots like that. If I were him, I would have done that. I think he'd like to have that back. But overall, you see his contribution. You see Malik Monk. You see Harrison Barnes. You see Keegan Murray, who's, on the, who's going to be on the all-rookie team. You can't say enough about the Sacramento Kings and how they've looked. I can't take any credit away from them. For no, that. absolutely not. And now they got two out of three at home if yes. they need it. You originally picked Golden State in seven yes. in this series. I'm still holding on to that. That's, that is what, so you still expect the Warriors to win? Well, listen, I'm still going with them. I'm not jumping off that ship. I'm just not doing it. They got Steph Curry. They got Klay Thompson, who, by the way, dropped 26 yesterday. Let's yep. not forget about Klay here. But I think that if you're the Golden State Warriors, you should do everything you can to try to get it into get them in game five because a game seven on the road and that's city in Sacramento, I mean, that's just going to be a sensational environment, and they'd still have a chance in my estimation, but I think now that you've got some momentum and you sort of have Sacramento reeling a little bit, you go for it. Here's why I would still pick the Warriors, because Sacramento is a relatively young team. Who's been there outside of Harrison Barnes and the coach Mike Brown? Who's been there? Even though I believe in their skill and I believe in the talent, we all know that Game 7 is an entirely different atmosphere. I mean, it, it doesn't get more pressurized than that. Can that young team, even on their home court, handle a quote-unquote game seven? I don't know about that. I have to see. Golden State will probably go for the jugular in game five because they know they got game six back at their house. Uh, but – Game seven. This looks like it has game seven written all over it. It's been a terrific series. Exactly. Legler brought up the same. Now, he, to, as we get on to our next order of business, I should point out that despite the fact that you are ESPN's most recognizable person, I almost didn't recognize you when you walked in. Where's the blue and orange? Well, no, they, I was well, expecting well, well, blue well, well, and orange well, today. Won, but they won. But they won. I mean, they won <laughs> yesterday. Today's an off day. There's no reason for me to rock the blue and orange. And by the way, it's a rarity because you don't see me saying wearing the same colors two, three days in a row. <laughs> but that's what I did over the weekend. I rocked blue and orange all week and long because I was representing my next. I don't usually roll like that. Having said all of that, they handled their business. They took games three and four. I was incredibly happy. Jalen Brunson, to me, has been the best player in this series. R.J. Barrett has really balled over the last two games. Tom Thibodeau has done an exceptional job, and I can't say enough about his willingness to bench Julius Randle. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that played the first 77 games of the season. Julius Randle is, a, is an iron horse. He shows up, no doubt about it. He got hurt and was out the last five games of the regular season. Kane played strong in game one, considering the fact that he was still ailing. But he was off yesterday. And for Tom Thibodeau to be willing to bench him in the fourth quarter was huge. He's sending a message to the team, whatever it takes to win. Julius Randle, on the other hand, who we all love in New York and appreciate, but this is the problem he had with the Knicks fan base last year. What the hell are you doing walking out and not doing interviews and looking upset when the team won? 
you weren't playing well, and because you got benched in the fourth quarter, you can't stand up and talk to folks. This is the weakness. This is the mental weakness that we're talking about that we worry about with Julius Randle. Because when things are not going his way, he gets rattled. If he's not making shots and he's not scoring, he becomes a defensive liability. He doesn't make smart plays. And this is why Tom Thibodeau had to bench him and go with the lineup that he went with because those guys were doing whatever it took to get the job done. It's a, it's a damn shame that somebody else has to show Julius Randle, who's the face of the franchise, this, even though I believe now it's Jalen Brunson. Yes. But it's a damn shame that they have to show uh, Julius Randle this. But he showed why yesterday. Being mentally weak by walking out and not talking to folks just because you were upset you didn't play in the fourth quarter. When your team won the game. The, the, Monica McNutt wanted me to ask you this. Okay. Have you in any way based on what we've seen in this series and the way R.J. Barrett has played and some of the other young Knicks, the depth that they didn't trade. Rethought your position on the Donovan Mitchell no, trade. No, I still at all. feel the way that I feel. I said it before and I say it again. New York Knicks can't lose the series. If they lose the season, the series, the series, the season's a failure. Yeah. Because Donovan Mitchell is somebody that should have been in a New York Knicks uniform. I don't care how he's looked these two games in New York City. We all know that Donovan Mitchell is a star. By the way, bro, you got to play better. One for nine shooting in the second half, just two points. That's absolutely positively pathetic. Stars find a way to get the job done, at least to some degree. You make sure that it's not your fault. And Donovan Mitchell, particularly yesterday, you could easily put that Cleveland loss on his shoulders. I believe he'll make up for it in game five. But having said all of that, Grimes, Quickly, Barrett, I appreciate them very, very much. They are not Donovan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I still believe Donovan Mitchell should have been in a New York Knicks uniform. I still believe that no matter what we've seen from the Knicks this season, they would have been even better with Donovan Mitchell, especially in terms of their future. Shaping up to be a fascinating series, and we got Dylan Brooks and all of that stuff. And I think all eyes on Anthony Davis, because as he goes, it feels like so go the mm -hmm. Lakers. As of this moment, who do you believe is in control of that series? Lakers. With ease. And the fact of the matter is, Lakers win the night series over. So they got to watch out for tonight because John Moran is coming. No question about it. You saw what he did you know, coming off of his hand injury. Dropped 45. Came on strong in the second half. We all know this. But they got blitzed in the first quarter. They were down 35-9, to 38-9, to nine, ultimately. But in the end, what it comes down to is that when Anthony Davis is doing his things, as he did in games one and three, the Lakers are winning. Steven Adams is out. Brandon Clark is out. They have nobody big to contend with Anthony Davis outside of Jaron Jackson, and you got to protect Jaron Jackson because he's prone to foul trouble. So you can't really put him up against Anthony Davis. You give the ball to Anthony Davis. You make sure the offense goes through him. You find a way for LeBron and everybody else to fit in, and nobody does that better than LeBron. So this is what you do. You feed the beast, which is Anthony Davis. Let him do his thing. Another mentally weak individual. I'm not calling him mentally weak literally, but I'm saying somebody that has exhibited mental weakness. Dylan Brooks, you chirping, chirping, chirping. OK, and then when you get yourself ejected after y'all got blitzed in the first quarter after the game, you don't want to talk to anybody. It's amazing to me how these guys, I, I mean, it, it just shows a flagrant level of mental weakness when you're chirping and then all of a sudden you got a bad day and you don't want to answer for the, for the stuff that you created. So Anthony, so Dylan Brooks and Julius Randle are in the same sentence, in the same ilk right now. But as it pertains to the Lakers, they have control of this series. They win the night, they win the series. They lose tonight, the series is in jeopardy because you do not want to give Memphis that momentum. They cannot go back to Memphis tied 2-2 and think that's going to be a good thing for them. It will not be. I agree, especially with the way this series is going to go every other day now. And that's yeah. a long trip right. between uh, Los Angeles and Memphis. So I think right. the advantage, I, I think tonight is the series. And look, we could be this close from Steph versus LeBron, again, something that we did not know we'd ever see in the playoffs. Oh, we could would, be a week away. That would be something special. That would absolutely positively be something special. It's something that we would love to see. We would love to see, but I think Sacramento is going to have more to say about that than Memphis. All right, Stephen A. Smith, first take 20 minutes away here on ESPN. You're the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Obviously, a full day of this, and then the playoff action continues. We'll have games all next weekend and more. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.